we have two identical catchment models representing the border upland landscape. Both have been farmed and developed in very different ways, and this affects how water is transported throughout the catchment. Let's look at some of the different features and discuss their effect on water transit. You can see that this model shows heather moorland purple in colour, meaning it's not been overgrazed. It contains very few or no drainage ditches, allowing the blanket bog to hold a large capacity of water. There are patches of native juniper and willow scrub that provide habitat for wildlife and will also hold a proportion of water. On the other model, the heather has been heavily overgrazed and appears grey in colour. The blanket bog has a large network of drainage channels cut through it and therefore will not hold as much water. This catchment contains more woodland consisting mostly of native broadleaf species such as birch, oak, ash and rowan. As well as being a great habitat for wildlife, this type of woodland holds more water and in riparian zones creates natural dams and ponds that act as a water storage facility. On the other model, there are very few trees and these are mostly coniferous. This type of woodland often contains drainage channels so that water is not held there. The riparian zone is very bare with very few trees and this can aid riverbank erosion. Tweed Forum has created and restored native woodlands, which you can see from these pictures. On the other model, hedges, single trees and dikes are common. They provide safe stock fencing, are visually attractive and reduce the speed that water reaches the low-lying land. Fertilisers and other agricultural chemicals are used to their minimum, reducing pollution in watercourses. This model depicts a very bare landscape, which is not visually appealing or good at slowing the flow of water through the catchment. In this catchment, the land is ploughed with the natural contours of the landscape. When it rains, the water will be held in the furrows. Fertiliser and soil improvers will also be kept on the ground, avoiding pollution into watercourses and benefiting the farmer and the environment. In this catchment, the field has been ploughed up and down. Rainwater will quickly flow downhill, washing fertilisers and soil improvers into the nearest watercourse. On the other model, the river meanders through a natural floodplain. Various microhabitats are present, including pools, riffles, gravel deposits and backwaters, suitable for a wide variety of wildlife. Water moves slowly and when there's a high water event, it can spill into the floodplain temporarily. In this catchment, the watercourse has been straightened. As the shortened watercourse cannot handle the volume of water running through it, it will overflow into the surrounding land. Man-made flood barriers are needed, which create a deep, dark, fast-moving channel, not very favourable for wildlife. Tweed Forum has worked with farmers and landowners and restored areas of Straighten River. Here you can see the Eddleston Restoration Project. The aim of these models is to demonstrate the main focus of our work, which is achieving multiple benefits, such as improving farming systems so that they are prosperous and environmentally friendly, achieving woodland expansion targets to help sequester carbon, improving water quality and riparian habitat and enhancing designated species such as otter and salmon. An important part of our work is spreading the message to other practitioners, schools, colleges and policy makers and communities. Our catchment models are particularly useful in showing how restoration can bring about multiple benefits to the environment, society and the economy. The models are easily transported and talks can be tailored to any age of student. They give a hands-on demonstration of natural flood management at the catchment level. If you would like to find out more about our practical experience in this field, then please arrange a visit from our team.